Welcome to Secrets to Selling Your Business, the podcast for entrepreneurs and business owners looking to unlock the secrets behind successful business transitions. Join our host, Jacob Koenig, a partner at Woodbridge International, as he gives you the knowledge to navigate complexities, embrace strategic shifts, and prepare you to sell your business with no regrets. At Woodbridge, we know how to give you the wisdom to achieve your ultimate success. And now, here's your host, Jacob Koenig. All right, welcome to the show. Very excited to have our guest today, David Castro. He's the founder and CEO of the Icebreaker app. David, welcome to the show. Great to be here. Thanks so much, Jacob. So, Dave, why don't we start off uh, talking about Icebreaker, what it is, uh, how it uh, empowers people to, to make new connections. Yes, absolutely. Icebreaker is a, you know, first of its kind uh, solution that uh, empowers people to make the connections that matter in whatever context they're in. Uh, usually, you know, that's uh, in person is where you find the most networking, but you know, there's networking that's done these days in virtual events. What it allows you to do is that when users, you know, show up at that event, they attend the event, everyone that's within eyeball distance uh, utilizes the radio signals from your phone. Everyone that's in eyeball distance that has the app on drops into the discovery screen of the other users nearby. So the quality of your projections, you know, equate to the quality of the connections that you make. So the more you say about yourself, the more valuable it is for everybody. Because they can see your face and they can likely see your name badge. But um, and you see or who's around you and, and you can connect to the people who you want to be actually reaching out to and get through all the other people quickly. <laughs> that's exactly right. And even better than that is, and we ask you as you're logging, as you're signing up, what are some ideal, what's a couple words that describe your ideal connection? So that when you have the app on and you show up at that event, if other users hit those keywords, it'll notify you. So you're at an event, you're at a conference and you can walk from you know, the registration desk to your chair and anybody that you are going by as you walk through the conference, you know, the event venue, if they hit your keyword, it'll buzz you. And then you can pull your phone out of your pocket and look and see their profile, right? And be like, oh, I need to go talk to Jacob. He's the podcaster. I'd love to chat with him. So uh, super valuable. So not only does it allow you to see who's around you and, you know, introverts love that to kind of break the ice and start conversations, but it allows you to identify that two to 5% of the room that you really want to talk to instead of, you know, waste, not wasting, but spending, you know, your time talking to the other 90% before you actually get that ROI that you're looking for in that networking event. Yeah. That's definitely uh, a huge efficiency gains for. uh, Absolutely. Yes. And you've been at it since uh, 2019. So just before the pandemic, how did that impact uh, the the rollout and and sort of the game plan? I disliked that uh, (laughs) thing. As you can imagine, you're developing something to help bring people together and COVID is separating people. And so, but because of the way that the, uh, the tech works, that icebreaker works for socially distance, you know, networking, it's fantastic, but it also made us pivot and Mm -hmm. enable the uh, hybrid and virtual event networking, which was a godsend. So it was actually really valuable for us. Excellent. And when it is in person, how does it work in terms of eyeball distance? Is that a certain yes. set radius or what's, it, I, uh, what's the setting? You know, depending on the reflection and all that other stuff. But uh, for the most part, it's a short distance radio waves that are going out from your phone. You know, so that's why like for instance, when um, I came up with this idea, one of the ways was when I realized it was a short distance, you know, play was on the highway and people were flying by me. And as I'm connecting my phone to the radio, you know, I'm picking up the phones signals of the cars that are going by me. Right. So I don't get everybody's phone, just the people that are, that are, you know, driving by me on the highway. So it's the same concept, but in person, you know, it's about a hundred meters. Yeah. So as long as you have the phone on, if you turn it off, you know, turn the app off. It doesn't do anything, but you can have the screen off and have it running in the background, which is ideal because, you know, you don't have to have it right. on the whole time. That's the whole idea, right? So you can turn the app on, uh, walk into your, into your event and uh, never even look at the screen if you don't want to, and then just wait for it to, to buzz you for somebody that's nearby. Yes, and they sure. can see that you're nearby and they can walk up to you and say, Hey, you know, I've been looking for an SEO you know, yeah. or a software developer or somebody to help me sell my company, you know, Jacob, do you know somebody that, you know, can you help me? Right. That would be valuable. For sure. And I, I bet it's 
best to have it at the events. You know, people who 100%. might not have heard about the uh, the app before can sign up right off the bat and help them to make the most of whatever event they're at, right? Yeah. Event- with any particular event groups or anything of that sort? Uh, beginning to, this year has been a lot more kind of pushing and getting that word of mouth and getting the testimonials. It's the coolest thing to uh, to see the testimonials from usage at an event. I, I strongly believe that the life that we're dreaming of is built through the connections that we make. Mm-hmm. And so to be a part of people making, you know, connections, uh, getting clients, getting partners, those type of things, or connecting other two people is, mm-hmm. uh, is the funnest thing ever. But um, yeah, in terms of there's kind of two you know, target uh, audiences. One is just users like you and I that will show up at an event and, you know, we want to uh, maximize our time there, the resources of time and energy or money that we spend. And we have a limited budget of time and, and right. energy in order to get that ROI while we're there. And then event hosts who are trying to create ambiance and trying to create a wonderful experience that yeah. people like that event was use, was valuable. Like right. the right people showed up and I connected with people and they had this super cool app that enabled me to make sure that I connected with the right people. So we have a whole program for, um, for event hosts to, yeah. to help them to use it during their event. Excellent. Yeah, it's, a, it's very exciting and I, I don't want to get too far away from it, but I, I, I just need to speak about it. This is the secrets to selling your business podcast and, and you have a whole litany of, uh, of experience here um, with startups throughout your career, 20 plus years. Um, multiple exits. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, the journey to get to where you are today? Yes, it's always longer than you expect, but uh, you know, your next conversation could be the one that changes your life. You never really know your your, but patience is key. So mm-hmm. sales is key, and uh, I see a lot of founders, especially if they're more technical side, they're more the delivery side. I think they have the view of, you know, if we do a good enough job, it'll just happen. It'll just sell itself. And that's, that's not the case. So I think on that side, I think better prioritization of the value of sales and opportunities that, you know, right all wrongs, if you've got the right, you know, uh, pipeline of opportunities and the sales engines is super critical. And then on the sales side, you know, I, I've been on that side too, actually, where the, uh, the weakness was on uh, the back end, right? The operational delivery focus. Sure. Where uh, you know you're you're constantly bringing on clients, but you know how's it going with the clients you got and in the projects and those type of things. So they're both important, but definitely I think the uh, the patience thing. Yeah, I mean to have those uh, all set up and institutionalized before reaching out to a potential partner. Um, you know, I think that's what we see in the industry as leading to successful transactions is things being sort of buttoned up and and in a way where where a transition is is quick and, and painless. But also yeah, in the startup yeah. world, obviously, you have things at various stages, getting uh, getting investments and getting partnerships, as you said, with operational log jams, having that right partner might really be the key to the catalyst to, to really growing things and, and launching it to the moon. I mean, I know in, in your experiences, uh, your exits have mostly been on on things where you've already sort of come off a little bit from the, the day to day and, and you were mm-hmm. more of a passive equity holder, but... Are there any uh, lessons learned that we can draw from in those experiences uh, for our audience listening? Who well, I think you said something really valuable there around institutionalizing standard mm-hmm. operating procedures and processes and those type of things. Also, you know, in terms of the uh, data, intuition mm-hmm. is not a good dashboard. Right. And so I think having, you know, a really good view of your KPIs, your metrics, your inflows, you know, cash on hand, your, all all those things, right. Um, What's on the, what's on the table uh, in terms of hours or whatever it is that your uh, supply chain requires. Those are all critical Uh, intuition as a data integration or as a dashboard is, is not good. So SOPs are, are critical. Right. Absolutely. And in the, uh, the exits that, uh, that you had had, were you at all involved with the conversations with the founding partners as they were starting that process or looking for potential acquirers or, or merger uh, partners otherwise? Yeah, uh, you know, and that's kind of where if you have the right data, you know, in the right dashboards and, the, and so forth, 
you really do understand where you're at. And now the question is just what are the multiples that, that you're going to get? And that's based upon run rate and opportunities, you know, that are coming. So again, that guy who's the uh, kind of more of the COO, CFO type, you know, that's super valuable. And then the opportunities, you know, being uh, prioritized Absolutely. are critical as well. But yeah, that, that was the, um, I think getting that view of what's going on is one of the most valuable things around acquisition conversation. You really clean stuff up, yeah. you know, they start asking the questions that you haven't been asking internally. <laughs> and then you're like, Oh crap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Although sometimes that can be the opportunities then for further growth. Uh, oh yeah. It's so valuable. Oh my, it's yeah. Super valuable. I, I've seen where uh, that actually leads somebody to say, Oh, if we just do these things, we'll be even more valuable. Let's now take what we've learned from these conversations about acquisition and then go implement them and then come back and ask for a heck of a lot more. Right. And did your experiences working with these companies, uh, anything that you drew from to, you know, shape your, your view on entrepreneurship, anything that influenced you as an entrepreneur and, uh, and your view here creating icebreaker. Yeah. I mean, in your, your philosophy, right. Towards, uh, looking at, at how the connections you make being so important, you know, we at Woodbridge certainly think that that's why we, we go to a very wide potential, uh, list of, uh, of potential buyers and, and really try to find that right match. I think in yeah. a similar way, it's, it's making those connections, right. And yeah, that's a great point. You know, the, just cause somebody's offering a buy or, or, you know, excited, that doesn't mm. necessarily mean that you should be excited about this person that, you know, might acquire. It has uh, a lot of impact on employees and clients and those type of things. So that's actually uh, an interesting point there as well. It's, you know, having that uh, networking is everything just as uh, business is sales, mm. you know, uh, networking is part of that, that process and uh, having a really wide net is uh, really valuable to eventually land where you want to be with the right buyer because you don't want buyer's remorse. You know, you don't want to like have regrets about, you know, what they did with, especially depending on how much money you get out of it. Yeah. If you don't get a whole lot out of it and yet it still continues to do well, that's gratifying. Yeah. If you don't get money out of it and they, they kill the the company, you know, you, you're not going to be, you feel good worst, about that. Worth of both worlds. So you certainly, yeah. yeah, finding that right partner. It's, that's what it comes down to. And so similar, Dave, for Icebreaker and, and the future here, I'm, I'm curious to hear, and I'm sure our, our listeners are as well, how you see Icebreaker changing and how it will change how we all connect personally and professionally. And if there are any upcoming features or developments in the pipeline that we should be looking out for. Yeah, thanks. Uh, there's a handful that uh, I feel are very core to the main delivery that icebreaker is doing which i i described earlier you know so so stay tuned for those but it's going to continue to you know maximize your ability to um to make the connections that matter and then to to cultivate those and maximize the roi that's yeah. really what icebreaker is about yeah this is something that's going to transform the way that people look at going to networking events mm -hmm. it's going to uh impact very positively everyone's experience of the return on investment they get when they show up at events. A lot of people don't go to, to uh, networking events because they haven't found a lot of value out of them. And especially if you're on a spectrum, right, of introversion slash introverted you are, the less people that you you chat with when you're there. Well, if you got to speak to 90% of the room to find 2 to 5%, how often is somebody that's more introverted going to find their ideal connection? they're going to get burnt out much faster, right? That's why I say there's a budget of time and energy. You could be the energizer bunny and get through everybody or not get through everybody because the, the event ends. So I, I really think we're going to um, revolutionize the uh, expectations at networking events. Well, Dave, that was all I had planned here to ask you today, but uh, is there anything else that you'd like to leave with our audience? No, I really appreciate the time. I appreciate the opportunity to chat. And uh, I would say... Icebreaker is spelled differently. So if you're listening to this and you think you're going to go find it, it's spelled I-C-E-B-R-E-K-R. -E -E so spelled a little bit differently. The first two E's and no A. So I-C-E-B-R-E-K-R. -E -E so yeah, that, that would be yeah. my suggestion. Thanks, we'll Jake. We'll have all the links uh, to uh, to the Icebreaker app. Uh, maybe we'll put Apple and, uh, and Android for convenience. 
down in uh, in the links below. So David Castro, founder and CEO of Icebreaker, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Jacob. Appreciate it. Thank you for listening to another episode of Secrets to Selling Your Business, the podcast for entrepreneurs and business owners looking to unlock the secrets behind successful business transitions. We hope you enjoyed listening to this week's guest and their insights. If you liked what you heard, please consider subscribing wherever you listen to podcasts.